Well, still on that story, hospitals and clinics continue to bear the brunt of the Western Cape taxi strike. The provincial health department says sporadic taxi violence is disrupting health services. Many healthcare staff have been attacked, leading to surgeries postponed and facilities running at limited capacity. For more on this, I am joined by Harit Pretorius, the DA Western Cape spokesperson on health. Thank you so much, Mr. Pretorius, for joining me this evening. Uh, you know, Let's first and foremost start with how has this ongoing taxi tri strike um, been impacting the provision of health care um, generally in the city of Cape Town? I think firstly we have to state that there can be no excuse for targeting hospitals, ambulances, staff, and uh, that it cannot be condoned. Uh, it has certainly uh, affected the services rendered by our very, very professional staff. In my view, they are heroes. Uh, that is those who could make it to work mm. uh, because many of our facilities are seriously, seriously understaffed because of the actions of a few not allowing life to proceed in our province. Yeah. And, and can you provide us maybe a little bit more details on the, the uh, recent attacks on EMS personnel? I know there was incident where ambulance was torched uh, at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Um, some staff were also assaulted. Um, so, you know, how are these attacks basically affecting the morale and safety of EMS staff? Obviously, as I, as I said, they are heroes to us. Uh, but if you cannot go to work, you cannot be a hero. Uh, and this is what the problem is with the uh, amb with an ambulance being attacked, people being prevented from attending uh, their work through lack of transport to their from their homes to their work and back to home. Um, we we obviously, uh, as far as I understand, there are negotiations negotiations going on as we speak, and we hope that there will be a speedy end to this. Uh, just back to the. Uh, impact on our facilities. Vanguard Hospital had to close on Thursday afternoon. There can be absolutely no excuse for attacking staff. These are, these are emergency staff. These are priority staff in any facility in any province in the country. Uh, I believe it's contained mainly to the metro areas of Kailicha and Polini and Danoon and Delft, and we certainly hope that all our staff can take up their positions as soon as possible. And maybe just detail the measures that are currently being taken to ensure the safety of EMS personnel uh, during this taxi strike, um, you know, especially in those areas that you just mentioned. And, and maybe also touch base on uh, what are the police doing in this regard? Is ESAPS, you know, coming on board here uh, by providing some security and safety for EMS uh, drivers and personnel? Well, I can state that I have uh, liaised with the MEC for Police Oversight uh, and Community Safety, Minister Regan, whom you spoke to earlier, mm. um, who assured me that they have made resources available in specific hotspots uh, to monitor the situation. Of course, you know, when an ambulance needs to go somewhere and it is not safe to go there, it has to be accompanied by the SAPS. And, and often, because of resources being stretched, the SAPS uh, themselves cannot be uh, available uh, at the beck and call of, of the ambulance services. So uh, it, it really is becoming a, a compromised situation, and we trust that in those places where the police and the uh, law enforcement have been, uh, dis uh, been uh, displayed, that they can actually, you know, prevent any further incidents of violence and of preventing people to come to work. The irony of all of this, uh, Mr. Afki, is that because of the actions of those who protest or proclaim to protest, more people are actually allowed to the hospital facilities where they have to be treated and attended to by less staff. Mm. I, I cannot get my head around that. Mm. It, it definitely is a devastating situation, you know, for uh, the, not just the staff, but also patients to be in. Um, and maybe let's, let's talk about, you know, some of the risks. Have there been, have there been any um, 
life-threatening risks to patients regarding the strike um, at all. Um, I don't know if I've heard of any of those stories, but maybe you might have more details. And then maybe also, you, you, I think you mentioned earlier, permanent facilities, some facilities being targeted as well. Is that the case? Mr. Afke, you broke up the, I don't know whether oh. the, the connection is bad on my side. Yeah, no, um, I don't know if you can hear me now. Can you just repeat briefly? Could you yes. briefly summarize? My, my apologies for that. Have there been any life-threatening risks to patients in, in, in the strike? Um, or, and also, what are some of those facilities, those permanent phys health facilities that are being targeted, like you mentioned earlier? Is that the case? Have you seen uh, more incidents patients, like that? Not that we... Not that I know of uh, at this stage. Uh, we obviously hope that it doesn't happen. Mm. I think, yeah, we're having a little bit of a technical issue here yes. with Mr. Pretorius. Um, unfortunately, we'll have to end it there, but thank you so much for your time. Um, I wish we could continue further, but unfortunately, you know, technology sometimes you know, fails us in, in, in this sense. But thank you so much for your time, Mr. Pretorius. That was Harry Pretorius, Western Cape Health Department spokesperson, just giving us an update, um, you know, the impact that the strike in Cape Town, the taxi strike, is having not just on patients, but also healthcare workers in this regard.